Hey guys, I'm GamerMate, welcome back to a new video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a varying global leaderboard. So, let's get into the video. So, first thing you need to do is actually make the leaderboard. So, you add in a part, then name it to leaderboard part. Inside of that, add in a surface GUI. Inside of that, then we have a text label, named the title for this. Then we also have a frame, named the play holder which will hold all the usernames and ranks and stuff like that. Inside of that, we have another frame named Sample. Inside of that, we have three text labels, one for a rank, one for a name, and then one for a cache. And also, if you want, you don't have to use cache. It could be for like wins or rebuffs or anything. But for this, I'm just going to be using cache. So, if you want, I'll show you the properties. So, for the text label, for the title, the anchor point is set to 0, comma 0. Then the position is just 0, comma 0, comma 0, comma 0. Then for the size, it's 1, comma 0, comma 0 0.1, then comma 0. Then for a playholder frame, the anchor point is 0, comma 0. I also background transparency is set to 1. Then for position, it is 0, 0.05 comma 0, comma 0 0.15, comma 0. Then for size, it's 0 0.9, comma 0, comma 0 0.8, comma 0. Then for the sample frame, the anchor point is 0, comma 0. Then position is 0, comma 0, comma 0, comma 0. Then for the size, it's 1, comma 0, comma 0 0.1, comma 0. Now if we look at the labels, so rank 1, so the transparency is set to 1, the anchor point is 0, 0, and position is 0, 0, 0, 0, and for the size it's 0, 0.2, 0, then 1, 0. Then for the name label, the position is 0, 0.2, 0, 0, 0. And for the size, it's 0, 0.5, comma 0, comma 1, comma 0. Then for the cache label, position is 0, 0.7, comma 0, then 0, 0. Then the size is 0, 0.3, comma 0, comma 1, comma 0. Also, you don't need to put text because we'll change that with the script. But anyway, another thing we need to do is in the placeholder, click plus. Then add in a UI list layout. Then for properties, change padding to anything you want. I'll just try 0 0.05, comma 0. Another thing we need to do is click sample, go to properties, then make sure visible is unticked, like that. Okay, and also, now what we need to do now is make a leader stat script. And if you already have one, they could just skip ahead. But if you don't, then if we go to the script service, click plus, then add in a script, then name it to leader stats, like that. And in the script, if you type in game.players.player added, colon connect, function, two more brackets, then player. So every time a player joins game, then that's what player is. So each player in the game is just player. Now if we make a variable for the leader stats, so equals to and then instance dot new brackets speech marks and then folder. Then in between brackets and speech marks, do a comma, then type in player. So what this will do is we're making a variable, so leader stats equals to a new folder. Because we're creating a new folder using instance dot new. Then we set the parent to a player. But now, if we do lead stats dot name equals speech marks, and then lead stats. Then once you've got that, if you make a variable for the cache or whatever value you want, so local cache equals to instance dot new brackets speech marks, and then number value because it's going to be a value that is a number. So once again, 
in between brackets and speech marks, do a comma. Then this time, we want the parent to be the leader stats. Why can't I spell? Then, now we need to set the name. So cache.name equals speech marks, then cache. Then cache.value equals to zero. And this is how much cache the place spawns in with. So if you want it to be zero, then set that to zero. So this could be whatever number you want. Once you've got that, close it off. Okay, so now, once you've got that, we're going to start scripting the leaderboard. So, open it up. Okay, then inside the player holder frame, add in a script. If you want, you can name it. I'll just name my to leaderboard script. So now, we we'll reprint hello world. And after we've wrote everything out, I'll explain what each thing does. So we're going to be making a variable for the data store service. So local data store service equals game colon get service brackets speech marks then data store service. Now if we make another variable and then name this to whatever you want, I'll just name mine to cache data store equals to data store service colon get ordered data store then brackets then speech marks and then cache leaderboard once again you can name it wherever you want now if you make a variable for the leaderboard part equals to and because this script is in the playholder we need to do script dot parent dot parent dot parent so we need to make sure you have three parents Okay, so now if we do local and then we can do refresh rate equals to and then 10. You don't have to do 10 because this is how many seconds it'll take to refresh the leaderboard. So this will be 10 seconds. So now we're going to be making a function. So local function, then refresh leaderboard, two brackets. So now if we do for i comma player in pairs brackets then game dot players colon get players then do so now if we do cache data store of the name of your your data store colon set the sync then player dot user id comma then player dot leader stats dot cache dot value like this then underneath this end go down and now we're going to be using a pcall function so we do local and then success and then comma error equals to pcall and then brackets function then more brackets now if we make a variable for data, so local data equals to cache data or cache data store colon get sorted and then a sync brackets. Now if we do false and then comma, then let's just do like 10. Once again, I'll explain what this does in a bit. Now if we do a variable for the page, so if we do local cache page equals to data colon get current page then brackets then go down I do for rank comma and then save data in ipairs brackets and then cache page and then type in do then we're going to be making a variable for the username so local username equals to game dot players then colon get name from user ID sync brackets then two number brackets then saved data dot key 
like that. Underneath that, if you do local cash or whatever value you're using equals to save data dot value. Then if you just scroll down and type in if cash then then local new sample equals to script dot parent dot sample colon clone so if you type in new sample dot parent equals to leaderboard part dot surface gui dot player holder then new sample dot name equals to then username then new sample dot rank text or rank label actually then dot text equals to then speech marks then hashtag that's our speech marks do dot dot and then rank like that then new sample dot name label dot text equals to username now if we do new sample dot cash label dot text equals to then cash also up top if we just do new sample dot visible equals to true like that but if you just fix these ends okay so the last thing we need to do is go down then do while true do then type in for i comma frame in pairs brackets then leaderboard part dot surface gui dot player holder colon get children brackets and then do now if do if frame dot name doesn't equals to then speech marks then sample and frame colon is a bracket speech marks then frame then then do frame colon destroy two brackets then underneath these two ends if we do refresh leaderboard two brackets then underneath that if we do weight brackets then refresh rate then that should be the script done so now i'll explain what each thing does okay so this so this is a variable to actually get the data store service which we need to actually like get the place stats so this variable is a data store that contains all the data for the cache then this one is just a variable for the actual leaderboard part which is this and the refresh rate just means how long it'll take to refresh the leaderboard then we're making a function that we'll be using each time we refresh the leaderboard then this is a for loop that gets all the players in the game then we're setting the player's cache value and underneath that for loop we're using a pcall function so this means that even if the code gets an error it'll carry on working and these are good for like using data stores then this is a variable and this will get all the data from all the players and the false this means it's in descending order so the people with the highest value will be at the top so pretend it'll be like the top 10 people for example if it was five then i'll show the top five people then this variable for the cache page so this get current page function will return the items on the current page okay so now this for rank save data in ipairs so this means that we're looping through the cache page our save data is for the cache value of the player so that's how much cache we have and the i in ipairs stands for index and i'll be looping through all the items in number order then this username variable so we get the player's username by using their user id from their save data and this cache is just the cache value then down here we use an if statement to check if cache is a thing and if it is then we clone the sample 
which is that GUI we made before. So we clone it. Then we make sure it's visible so we can actually see it. Then we set its parent to a playholder frame. And we set the name of it to the username so we know who's is who. Then we set the rank label, so text, to this hashtag, then dot dot, which means it'll connect it to their rank. Then we set the name labels text to the place username. Then we set the cache labels text to their cache value. Then underneath there, we have a while true do loop. So this will always run. And this for loop gets all the children of the play holder frame. Then we check if the frame's name, which is the children, doesn't equal to sample, which means we won't destroy the sample. Then we check if the frame is actually a frame, so we don't destroy the UI list layout. Then we destroy a frame to actually reset it. Then underneath here, we refresh it by using that function. Then we just wait the, um, the 10 seconds, which is a refresh rate. So a quick thing is that what you need to do is on line 20 of the variable for the username. You need to make sure you have a lowercase k for key, because before that was an uppercase. So make sure that's a lowercase. And also on line 21 of the cache variable, make sure that has a lowercase v for value, otherwise it won't work. Then that should be script done. If we click file, then publish to Roblox, then create new, then give it a name. But once you've done that, click create, then click close, and we had to publish it to actually go to the game settings, then go to the security tab, then make sure enable studio access to API services is ticked. So click save. Okay, so we might have to test in the actual game to see if it works. Okay, so I'm just in the actual Roblox game now. Here you can see on the leaderboard that I'm rank number one with my username and then my cache value and it refreshes. If I just go to the console, then server, then in the command line, if I just give myself some cache, so game.players, then your username, Then dot leader stats dot cash dot value plus equals to then we'll just do like a thousand. But now once it refreshes, it should say um, one thousand. There you go, it refreshes, and now it says one thousand. Okay, guys, that's gonna be for this video. If this video helped, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below. In the description, you can check our Roblox Group and Discord server. And I can't do my outro. Bye.